praise the lord everyone and uh, for our today's scripture portion we will read from matthew chapter 9 and from verse 14 to 17 matthew chapter 9 from 14 to 17 i will read and you can follow in your bible then came to him the disciples of john saying why do we and the pharisees fast off but thy disciples fast not and jesus said unto them can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them and then shall they fast no man put at the piece of new cloth unto an old garment for that which is put in it to fill it taketh up from the garment and the rent is made worse neither do men put new wine into old bottles else the bottles break and the wine runneth out and the bottles perish but they must put new wine into new bottles may the lord bless the reading of his word let's pray before we minister loving you holy father we thank you for the reading of thy word and you prepared our hearts through song lord abiding in you and every strength we can receive is from you how wonderfully lord thy words which we sang and it gave us the grace lord as we meditate on your word lord i pray anoint me afresh through your holy spirit the words only which you want me to speak may come out of my mouth and through this lord we all may be edified and encouraged and lord look at our own self before we take before we bring our needs request and petition before you lord so bless thy word and speak with us in the precious and most worthy name of lord and savior jesus christ amen so in this portion which we have read i was praying to the lord lord uh, give me uh, some word to give for fasting and prayer there are so many things most of the time we bring ezra and ezekiah and jehoshaphat uh, where they fasted and uh, along with that uh, we bring our uh, word of god to show us what fasting is but i was praying lord you show me something from the new testament what fasting is and then the lord brought me uh, my attention to this portion matthew chapter 9 and where the uh, john's disciple bring a question before the lord and says uh, saying uh, disciples of john came saying in verse 14 why do we and the pharisees fast often but thy disciples fast not so uh, in the old testament uh, pharisees uh, you know, they were told only on the day of atonement to fast but beside that they also fasted in many different times but this was just an outwardly they used to do all this thing because we know how the lord jesus christ rebuked pharisees in matthew chapter 23 for all the things they did it outwardly so they were telling that why your disciples are not fasting and john's disciples are fasting and pharisees also fast you know and the lord replies that uh, as long as the bridegroom is with them they will not fast it's like uh, going to a marriage uh, a, a party or a supper and uh, there is a joy and rejoicing is there uh, the it's a time of happiness and uh, that's not the time people would go and fast because they are attending a wedding where the bridegroom and the bride both of them are there but here the lord is saying as long as the bridegroom is there and when the party is going on you are not going to fast but the time is going to come when the bridegroom will be taken away that is lord jesus christ he is telling that beforehand he will be crucified and he will not be here after that they will fast so that was true and then he gives the two example of uh, cloth how that uh, the new piece takes away from the old one the rent is made worse and they, how we cannot put a new wine in the old wine skin but it has to be put into the new wine skin that was lord is saying that old thing is gone away 
uh, as we read in the book of Hebrews, everything which is of the old is gone away and everything has become new in Lord Jesus Christ. It's a new covenant, it's new everything. And we see after that, that how when the Lord Jesus Christ was taken away and how uh, they started fasting and prayer. But uh, we, I just want to bring a few things before us because the, this is the Lord put a burden in my heart. And uh, we have been fasting and pray, praying first Saturday of the month for many, many years, I believe. And uh, I want to know why are we fasting, you know? Uh, just want to, not as a criticism, but once in a while we have to remind ourselves that why are we fasting every Saturday, you know? Uh, has it become a routine for us, you know? It is possible that we say, oh, first Saturday of the month is fasting. We put it on the, uh, after the Sunday services there and we put all the announcement. This Saturday is fasting and prayer. So are we doing it as routine? Has it become a habit? Has it been a habit without any meaning in it? Has it lost its value? Very much important because if that has lost its value, we want to see few things which the Lord brought me. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 3. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 3. Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, ye are now made perfect by the flesh? Now, this is in a different sense Paul is writing, but I just want to bring this thought of fasting. Have we become so foolish that we started fasting in spirit, but now all the fleshly things are coming, you know, fast has become a routine, it's become a habit. Have we, has it become like that? Then that fast will not be accepted. Then Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32. Hebrews 10, verse 32. So I just want to take <clears throat> look at our own self and let us see where we stand as regarding we come for fasting. And then this also is in a different sense, but it's a call to remembrance. The former day in which you were eliminated, he endured such a great fight of affliction. Remember, former days when we started fasting and prayer, did we start because other assemblies are doing that, so we should do it? Or did we have a great burden? And that's why we did it. Remember all those days. Now, has it become a habit? Has it become a routine? Has it lost its value? See, Isaiah 58, even though the children of Israel fasted and many of the fasts the Lord accepted, but in Isaiah 58, verses 1 to 6, the Lord shows us what type of fast the Lord wanted. And let me read from Isaiah 58, verses 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show thy people their transgression in the house of Jacob their sin. Here, the Lord is showing uh, uh, to the, uh, through Isaiah, you tell the children of Israel, you cry loud, lift your voice like a trumpet, you know, like a trumpet, uh, speak loudly and show my people. I see how wonderful it is. Even though the children of Israel, they are gone away, but he says, my people. Same way we are also his people. Show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. Verse 2. Yet they seek me daily. They are every day coming and seeking me and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Verse three, wherefore have we fasted, they say, and thou seest not. They are saying, Lord, we are fasting, but you are not looking at me, us, what we are fasting. Wherefore, have we afflicted our soul? They said, we have afflicted our soul and you are not taking any knowledge in it. Behold, in the days of your fast, you find pleasure. See, the, what the Lord is saying, in the days of your fast, you find pleasures and exact all your labors. Verse 4. Behold, you fast for strife and debate. All these things behind 
the life of the children of Israelite was going on, but they came out just to fast and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. He said, even if you do like that, your fast to make your voice to be heard on high, I'm not going to hear it. Verse five. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? It's a question mark he's putting there. Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast? And an acceptable day. See all the question mark the Lord is bringing through Isaiah verse six. Is not this the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness and to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free, and that he break every yoke? This is what I want. But you are not doing that. But you still come to me with fasting. How will I hear your prayer? You know. Also, one thought before I was just starting this, the Lord brought me one more verse, uh, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor or its flavor or saltiness, where shall it be salted? It is thence good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden. Under foot of men. You, you are the salt of the world. You fast, right? But if the fast has lost its value, what is that going to help? You know, it's not going to help anything, you know. And also in Matthew chapter 15, in verse 9, also it says, You come outwardly, you know, uh, showing that you worship me, but in your heart, you in vain do they worship me for the doctrine of commandment. In the earlier, say, You come. Or with fasting, but it's not I accept, you know. The, it says, verse 8, the people draweth night unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching the doctrine. Their, their heart is far, but they still come to worship their mouth. This is what the Lord was bringing to me. Uh, so there you've been also fasting with all these years with Bethany House of Worship, has it become uh, like that, a routine or habit or lost its value? So we have to take an inventory. It's not for a discouragement, but if the Lord could use Isaiah to tell the children of Israel, my people, you are fasting like that and I don't accept it, you know. And as Brother Jollibai and others also have been through the Bible study, we have been hearing through all the messages then this is the last time, and as we saw in uh, 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 Revelation chapter 3, the church at Laodicean had become lukewarm, you know. So in bringing all this thing, so that's what was in my burden. And one thing is that uh, Romans 8, 26, holy prayer is the Holy Spirit number one priority, you know. See? Likewise, the spirit also should pray as we ought to, but the spirit itself make an intercession with groaning which cannot be. So do we have that power of the Holy Spirit and through the Holy Spirit are we praying? Because that's Holy Spirit number one priority that we should pray. Now prayer is also number one in the battle against Satan. are in the enemy's territory. What do we do? How are we going to fight against Satan? And the greatest thing which we can do to fight against uh, Satan is prayer. So prayer, number, prayer is number one ministry in the church. But let it not be habitual or routine. So the level of prayer is the level of power, the level of our prayer, whatever level we have, that is the level of power. Now to have victory over Satan, vigilant prayer is a must. We have to be vigilant in our prayer. That's the only way to overcome flesh, weak flesh. 
by a willing spirit remember lord said your your spirit is willing but the flesh is weak how do you overcome this flesh it is through the prayer vigilant prayer and satan will always strike us in the area which we are weak where we are slothful so we have to increase we have to be vigilant in our prayer you remember the lord said in matthew chapter 13 in verse 25 matthew chapter 13 in verse 25 while man slept his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way see how lord wonderfully brings you know because of our slothfulness because we are not vigilant just keep that uh, on the screen please we are not vigilant you know and that's why the lord said man man when man slept we are like that sleepiness laziness not vigilant that is the time the enemy that is satan will come and sow seed uh, will put tares among the wheat they will in our life we will bring all the tares and he will go away in this way we will become very slothful so we have to be mindful of the enemy that he may not take advantage of it any so only a watchful prayer is capable of tuning to a heavenly wavelength only prayer watchful prayer that's why again and again i always pray i think mark 13 33 it says that watch ye and pray watch ye and pray and when do we watch ye and pray take heed watch and pray for in no not the time is coming his time is coming any time and he is not slack concerning his promise as says in peter so he says take heed mark mark that word heed you know watch and pray lord wants during this time that we have to take heed watch and pray now as regarding the prayer is concerned lord jesus christ when he was on the earth he was a man of prayer you know when he he started his ministry with prayer see look chapter 3 verse 21 and 22 look 321 and now when all the people were baptized it came to pass that jesus also being baptized and praying the heaven was opened and the holy ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him and a voice came from him which said thou art my beloved son in thee i am well pleased see when all the people were baptized and it came to pass when jesus also baptized how did he start his ministry pray god lord jesus christ was a man of prayer then throughout his entire life we will see that later on he went on praying 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 and the, how did he ended his prayer a uh, prayer uh, his life on this earth M- M- matthew uh, sorry it is in hebrews chapter 7 25 Uh, before that let me go oh, you can put this on the screen but he ended his prayer life in the garden of gethsemane you remember he prayed with intensity in his heart his soul was so much afflicted and he prayed father if it is thy will take this out if it is possible take this uh, what i am going through suffering lord take it away from me you know but not my will thy that was the last prayer before he went on the cross started his ministry with prayer in between his life was prayer and also the last even on the cross he says father into thy hand he stay prayed father forgive them for they don't what they do is ended up his life with the ministry even hebrews chapter 7 and 20 wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come to him seeing that he ever live to make it now not only he started his ministry with prayer in between from the time till his death his life was full of prayer the end of the life is ended with prayer and after going to heaven is still interceding on behalf of us that is the prayer life of lord jesus christ and if you are going to be made into the image of our lord jesus christ then isn't it that we should be a man like our lord jesus christ a man of prayer sister of prayer all the time say lord jesus christ when he would get up in the morning he would pray see mark 135 mark 135 i will read from the screen 
and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed here also we see in uh, uh, in the morning the lord would rise up great a while before a day and he went out and departed in a solitary place and there prayed so he would get up very early in the morning and go to a place which is lonely nobody is there and there he would pray uh, also reminds me of the boxing uh, in uh, he used to pray whole night and not once you know he prayed so many times he prayed whole night his life was a, a life of prayer uh, there is one verse which i want to bring before you uh just one minute uh, bear with me okay yeah so one day one of the brother asked brother boxing he said uh, brother you spend whole night in prayer or you hardly get any sleep and then even if you sleep you sleep for one hour how do you get refreshed very next day you may have to minister three or four places and you just slept only one hour how if other people would have slept so late they would have woke up little late but even then for one hour sleep and you how do you wake up and then and he gave this verse to them uh, isaiah 50 in verse 4 isaiah 50 in verse 4 let me read from this. the lord has given me the term of the learned that i should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary see then he says lord touches my shoulder he waken wakeneth me morning by morning that's the testimony of our brother boxing he wakeneth me morning by morning how wonderfully he followed the example of lord jesus christ in prayer life we are getting together today to fast and prayer lord was a man of morning prayer mark chapter 6 46 and 47 and when he had sent them away i'll read mark 46 and 47 and when he had sent them away departed into a mountain to pray and when even was come the ship was in the midst of the sea and he landed on the lake even even was come he went evening he used to go to pray when even was come he was praying till evening you know he was praying till evening then he would go to a solitary place look 5 15 and 16 look 5 15 and 16 however the report went around concerning him all the more and great multitude came together to hear and to heal by the so he himself often withdrew into wilderness and pray he went to a solitary place he prayed see he started his ministry with prayer and baptism now this is in between the prayer life of lord jesus christ till the garden of gethsemane on the cross when he ended then he prayed all night look 6 in verse 12 look 6 in verse 12 now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night prayer to god so morning prayer evening prayer all night prayer solitary prayer that was the life of lord jesus christ now we don't want to go into detail because everything he wanted to do very next day he would go to the father and know the father's will through prayer and he would do that also why i am bringing this because it's very much important paul also was a man of prayer the day he came to know lord jesus christ as his savior on the road to damascus in acts chapter 9 and then we know that he was he was in a place and the lord brought you know he made himself uh, showed him to ananias and he said go and uh, talk to paul because i is a chosen vessel and uh, and ananias was very uh, afraid he was fearful he says lord how can i go because i have heard is killing everything but he says no go and uh, the lord had given him a sign and that we see in acts chapter 9 and verse 11 uh and uh, verse 9 
See, in uh, the Lord said to him, "Arise and go to the into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one who is called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed. How he started his life, prayer. How he ended his life, prayer. Lord, I have finished the work. What he had given to me. Wonderful man. I was looking at it." I and mean, we cannot go into all that. Almost in the New Testament, his epistle, forty-two prayers of Paul has been written. Forty-two prayers in the epistles. Man of prayer. You know, we have to see from all this example when we come. Let us not our prayer of fasting lose its own value or it become a habit. so prayer was the life of me. so as the lord told uh, to the disciple of john as long as i am, which i am the bridegroom as long as i am here my children are not my disciples are not going to fast but after i am gone they are going to fast you know so we see how paul uh, we see that uh, they started praying in ex chapter 1 all the disciples 120 i believe that was the number given there they started praying in the upper room and it was filled with the power of the holy spirit that prayer and what was the effect of that prayer we see in acts chapter 2 day of pentecost 3000 souls were won through peter's sermon how powerfully the lord used peter to give the word of god based on the prayer of the children in acts chapter 1 and we see pentecost then when we come to chap x chapter 4 from 29 to 31 if you can put it on the screen maybe we will read that how they prayed when they were suffering they were afflicted they were being punished put in prison how they prayed and now lord behold they are threatening and grant unto thy servant that with all boldness they may speak thy word even though they are going through problem they are saying lord give me the boldness that i may give the word of god by stretching for thy hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child jesus and when they had prayed see and when they had prayed the place was shaken that is what it has to be happen when we fast and pray today or every time we gather the place has to be shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the holy ghost and they spake the word of god with boldness so we word with boldness they prayed so they asked for the boldness in their prayer to give then as uh, i reminded you the lord said after the bridegroom is gone start fasting they will start fasting in prayer and then we see in acts chapter 13 verse 2 and 3 how the prayer was included with fasting see being grieved that they thought the no x chapter 13 verse 2 and 3 x 13 verse 2 and 3 and they ministered to the lord and fasted the holy ghost said separate me and barnabas and saul for the work whereunto i have called them verse 3 and when they had fasted and prayed they laid their hands on them and sent them away Paul and Barnabas they started fasting and prayed along with the other brothers. See the fasting after the Lord Jesus Christ is gone. They said, "My my children will fast," and they fasted to know the will of God because they knew Lord Jesus Christ fa- uh, prayed to know the will of the Father. And here through the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, they were shown what was the will that they should go on this missionary journey and where they should go. And we know how. in all three different missionaries journey the lord guided even the lord through the holy spirit said don't go here but go to this place when the philippines were they were supposed to go they went there according to the guidance of the holy spirit we have to come to learn how to fast and pray then when we go to the next chapter chapter 14 in verse 23 ex 14 and 23 they were praying and fasting to set up out elders and when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed and fasted they commanded them to the lord 
on whom they believed they commanded commanded them to the lord after fasting and prayer so fasting and prayer it's a it's one of the main thing in the church life and we see this prayer life prayer time is the least include uh, least uh, we can say the the, uh, the uh, believers in the church least attended uh, meeting in the church on the lord's day so many people come bible study they come then the prayer time comes very less fasting and prayer still less so that's what is happening all around the world but we have to be very careful how we fast so we must pray for the minister so because they prayed for the missionary journey what we have to pray you know in our day to day because we don't pray for ourselves we have to pray for the work of the church that's most important you know work of the church that is needed right now not that you lord heal me of this and heal me of that and i may pass in this exam yes don't we pray that on the regular tuesday bible study you know in prayer meeting why do we fast and pray why we will see the children of israel fasted for particular reason not for their daily things you know so here we see we must pray for the ministerial problem the missionary faces so many problems all over the world satan is after them you must be reading every day amita is sending me every day the perse- the persecution.com the international uh, that's uh, the uh, 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 what is that i forgot the name international concern and they send where the persecution is going on all over the world she sends me every day to pray for it you know every day all over the world children are suffering you know we go to africa even the small children you know villages you know how other people are harassing them killing them many people are going through a lot of problem because they stand on the word of god preaching so the in the epistle of paul see also in this we see few things you know in second timothy chapter 4 and 10 please don't put it because if you want you can put it but i want to go through faster so we see the demas is leaving them you know so during the time of paul ministry also for demas has forsaken me and loved this present world and is departed unto thessalonica and a christian to galatia galatia and titus and to so here we see during the time of paul demas left him then uh, we don't go in next chapter 15 30 36 36 to 40 there was a problem with barnabas they had a dispute and barnabas also left and took mark with him so paul one of by one they are leaving him you know and then in second timothy chapter 4 and 20 Trophimus fails, falls sick, and so the st- uh, team strength also decreases. One got sick. One was gone into the world. Barnabas left. Other was getting sick. So let's imagine such problem in the front line worker. We pray many of them are going through such problem. Many are leaving them. Some of them are gone in back from them. Some of them are sick. So they by themselves, few of them. go in the front line to preach the word of god so we have to pray daily for the anointing on the missionary for power and purity we should pray every day and especially during this time of fasting so we must keep praying so that he keeps knowing god as he goes making he know he should know missionary should know more about god as he makes known to other people we have to pray lord give him more of who you are so that he may be able to make known you to others people we have to pray for the protection of the missionary from all discouragement depression and dullness if the supply liner are faithful they will be rewarded just like the front liner you know supply liner are we you know we send gifts to those like many times we send gifts to voice of martyr open door ministry every home for christ and international concern 
we do send money to them because they are very helpful to help those who are going through persecution those who are preaching the gospel so we are the uh, we are the supply liner giving to those who are in the front liner so our money as a supply liner helps them to do the work of god i still remember brother koshi used to always say that when we misunderstood him many times he says you know you people are not able to go out <clears throat> and preach the gospel but there are many of them you give it to them you know and then at least you do not go but your money will be helpful you remember the lord said whatever mammon you have earned give it use it for god's glory so we have to whatever mammon is there if we use it for god's glory that's what the lord has given so we have to pray for it you know and pray for the missionaries that they may not be alarmed like people like alexander the coppersmith you know he he sees second uh, timothy 4 and 15 <clears throat> uh, paul went to preach the gospel but he suffered many thing of whom be the aware that he had greatly withstood our word that is uh, alexander the coppersmith if you go on the before verses i don't want to go through but you read it the coppersmith did not allow them to preach the gospel in our our prayers will keep them bold in all situation like we saw how they prayed in x 29 lord give us boldness so when we pray it will give the boldness to pray so whenever we fast we do so for a reason you know there are some circumstances which we pray for you know and that we have to follow what is mentioned and modeled in the bible we have to see that why they prayed and why we have to pray you know so it's i will not go into any detail but i will give the verses don't put it on the screen first of all children of israel fasted and prayed to seek the guidance of god that you will see in judges 20 23 to 26 when israel i will just give you an example and give you what went right children of israel went to battle with benjamin so and they went as with prayer fasting to seek god's guidance isn't isn't done to change god we see uh, fasting we don't do to change god but to make us more receptive to his guidance so they were asking lord who should go first is a juda will go first and then they went so guidance is very much necessary to fast and pray secondly we have to seek deliverance and protection there are two kings jehoshaphat and Hezekiah in Second Chronicles twenty verse one to four, just a part we prayed, you know. So uh, was to seek deliverance from enemies or circumstances. When they were deli- they were had problems, enemies had come. They had no resources. They did not have enough men to fight, you know. What did they do? They fasted in prayer. He says, "Our the one who fights for us is greater than he." one verse i still remember second chronicles chapter 20 let me go through if i get through that verse one of the sister had given this verse to a brother and from that time it went into my heart uh second chronicles chapter 32 you can put that on that uh, <coughs> it was 7 and 8 this is the time of hezekiah Second Chronicles thirty-two verse seven and verse eight. He says, "Be strong and courageous; be not afraid nor dismayed, for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with them. See, for there be more with us than him." Verse eight. With him is the arm of flesh, or the sword and the spear and whatever needed for war, but with us is the Lord. our god to help us and to fight our battles and the people rested themselves upon the word of hezekiah king of juda so here when we need anything deliverance and protection we come with fasting and prayer then in first samuel chapter 7 in verse 6 you can put that on the screen if you want to express repentance and return to god we have to fast and pray during this time of 
Samuel, and they gathered together to Mizpah and drew water and poured out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said, Lord, we have sinned against the Lord and said, you will judge the children of Israel. And see, they fasted because of their, because they had sinned and they had gone away from the Lord. They wanted repentance. That is the reason, you know, we don't fast for anything which comes in our mind. Please pray for this. We are fasting. If you want Lord's guidance, fast. If you want deliverance, fast. If you want to repent from the sin, fast. And the fourth one is to humble ourselves before the Lord. You see, when Ahab, he was a bad, evil king, but problems came in his life, he humbled himself. And Lord said, see, look, Ahab, how he has humbled himself. He fasted. So when we have to humble ourselves, we can fast to the Lord. And then if you have to express concern for the work of God, in Nehemiah chapter 1, 3 and 4, Nehemiah had concern for the work of God. Jerusalem is in ruin. The walls are broken. He had a great burden. He was tears fell in his eyes. And he says, see, the remnants are left of the captivity. There is There in the province are in great affliction, reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down. The gates thereof are burned, verse 4. And it came to pass when I heard this was, I sat down and wept. I started weeping, weeping, weeping and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed. That is when we need, when we have concern for the work of God. What, what concern do we have for the work of God? Yes, everyone has concern for the work of God. Lord has given us work, every one of us. And we have to have that concern, you know. If not, we are doing, as I reminded, let us have concern for those who have the concern for the work of God, like the missionaries, you know. Like Nehemiah, we have to have the burden not to do ourselves, but encourage others also. Come, let us serve the Lord. And then, sixthly, if we want to overcome temptation and dedicate our life to God, like Lord Jesus Christ, Matthew chapter 4, when he went through temptation, you know, to overcome, he fasted, you know, 40 days he fasted. And how did he overcome temptation? By the word of God. When we are tempted, we have to go with fasting and prayer, Lord, help us. We are tempted and nowadays with so many, the church is being tempted. Don't we fast and pray? We are being tempted, you know. And lastly, to express love and worship for God. Anna, the prophetess, you know, she loved the Lord. She wanted to worship. And Luke chapter 2 and verse 36, it's from 36 to 38, but if you can put verse 36. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe. She was of great age, lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. Let's see 37 and 38 too, you know. And she was a widow about eight, uh, 84 years, which departed not from the temple, but served. See, she never departed from the house of God, but she served with fasting and prayer night and day. She had burden, verse 30. Yeah, she had burden for the Lord and she fasted. And lastly, if we have any secret sin, see Isaiah 66, verse 18. Isaiah 66, verse 18. For in Isaiah, no, sorry, um, uh, Psalm 66, 18, which is a familiar verse. A.B. always put this, uh, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I have iniquity in my heart, if there is secret sin, Isaiah 59, verse 2. Isaiah 59, verse 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. We all are sinful people one with the other and our iniquity has separated us. But many times Satan blinds us. You know, I always say, you know, uh, just listen to me very carefully, you know. The light of Satan will blind us because it says in uh, Corinthian, Satan will come as an angel of light. You know, let me explain this. I, when I was thinking on it, how he comes as an angel of light. In the old uh, days, uh, when they used to take uh, photographs, you know, of a group or somebody, they used to have an old type uh, camera and they used to take a camera, cover themselves, go into the camera and look. And one person was there uh, with a flashlight and 
as soon as the flashlight is taken, they would take the picture. But you know, in taking the flashlight, our eyes would become blind. We would not be able to see, and the picture would not come properly. You know, that is the type of the a, a Satan comes as an angel of light. Boom! He will put the flashlight on us, and we will be deceived, and we will not be able to see the right thing which the Lord wants. But the Lord Jesus Christ, He says, "I am the light of the world." Uh, John eight twelve and nine five. His light is not like that. It will open our spiritual eyes to see. So this light, sometimes the Satan deceives us. He will not allow to see our iniquities that have separated us from God. And I'm always worried about believers. They are blinded because of Satan's light, and they will continue to do. And I have seen in my own life, continue to do so many things blindly. But when Lord is opening my eyes, so many. things and i said lord i never thought of it that this i was blinded brothers and sisters ask lord in your whole very truthfully lord show me where i am blinded believe me he will show thousands of things in your life which iniquity has uh, separated you from god because we do so many things not pleasing to the lord many things as a routine we don't even know that we should not do this because satan is blinded right So our iniquity separates us. Micah chapter three verse four. Micah three verse four. And they shall then they shall cry unto the Lord, but He will not hear them. He will He will hide His face from them that time, as they have behaved themselves ill in their doing. So they were doing wrong things. The Lord is going to hide His face, you know. so we have to pray and confess our sin which we do all the time but let it be sincerity you know a necessary step before fasting is to humble ourselves before we fast we have to humble ourselves before god same psalm 35 and verse 13 psalm 35 and verse 13 all this thing the lord showed me as i was waiting upon the lord but as for me when they are sick my clothing was sack cloth see and what david says i humbled my soul with fasting i humbled my soul with before we come to the lord we have to humble our soul before with fasting in my prayer written to my bosom so we have to humble and we have to confess our sin which we saw in 1 samuel 7 6 everybody confess their sin now let me show you few things i want to revival will not have priority mark that revival will not have priority Till prayer has priority. When prayer has priority, then revival will be a priority. I have given you an example of true example. Somewhere in uh, England side, somewhere Sweden or Norway, I don't remember where. And in the, a long time back, the a revival meeting was going on, and uh, uh, many people were coming to the saving knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ every day. for a week there was a revival meeting and so many people came to know lord jesus christ as their lord and savior <clears throat> what was the reason for it you know while the revival was meeting was going on some of the elders they needed something and that was in the basement of the church <clears throat> so they went out uh, went to the basement of the church to get it and the revival meeting was going on when they switched on the light they saw few sisters praying for the revival in that dark sisters were gathered together or few believers were there praying for the revival revival will only come through our prayer so revival will not have priority till prayer has priority and that's why because of the prayer great revival came four obstacle hinder the mighty power what are those obstacle which will hinder the prayer life selfishness unbelief ignorance and pride there are many others but these are the one someone has called fasting the weeping of the soul fasting is called the weeping of the soul revival delays because prayer decays revival delays because prayer decays prayer is number one in the battle against satan the greatest thing why we pray is fighting against satan ephesians 6 reminds us the last thing pray after all the weapon the lord says pray 
Now I just want to bring one more thing, a prayer of George Whitfield, one of the very great servant of God. Prayer of George Whitfield. What he prayed? Lord, if I am going to be like thee someday, Lord, if I am going to be like thee someday, help me to be like thee today. Lord, I am going to be like thee. We always say in 1 John, we read, you know, what we shall, we don't know, but when we see, we'll be like him that day. George Whitfield is saying, Lord, make me like you today. When we do all these things, brothers and sisters, this was my burden. And we have to awake once in a while while we do fasting and prayer. You know, we have to know, has it become habitual? Has we lost the value of that fasting and prayer? Do we pray for the missionaries? Do we for, pray for the things which are really very, very important, you know? Or just we bring daily, uh, weekly prayer meeting, which we have, we take that and bring it into fasting and prayer also. You know? That's nothing wrong, but in the Old Testament, we saw how some great problem came and they fasted and prayed. So brothers and sisters, this was my burden and uh, the Lord gave me this and I believe the Lord will encourage us, you know, prepare us that Lord, I don't want to have this fasting and prayer as a habit or a ritual or I lose his value. So may the Lord speak with us today and let us have the life of Lord Jesus Christ, man of prayer, beginning in the middle and, and even now also praying for us, all men of prayer, they fasted and prayed for the things related with the church, who should go for the ministry, where we should go for the ministry, who should be appointed the elders and all that, many things, you know. So may the Lord speak with us and give us grace.